to my gatekeepers. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up, guys. You're already equipped. We just need the language and the support. That's what I learned today. In today's being training, emotional intelligence and leadership, I learned that I'm already equipped. I just needed the language and support tools. So, to my fellow gatekeepers, as written by Sabonku Somme, it's time to wake up. And what's a gatekeeper? <laughs> I'm going to read it to you. And I'm also, I'm talking about this too, because my, I shared a post yesterday about um, how I needed space to flow between the polarities of the gender spectrum, right? And how in the summer and spring months versus the fall and winter months, how my energy flows. Uh, I went into more depth in the uh, God kink spirituality and that gay shit um, broadcast the channel um, for a point of reference. But today in uh, emotional intelligence. In leadership training class today yeah I found out I'm actually I'm way more equipped than I thought I just I just didn't have the language or the support tools and when it comes to navigating generational trauma in this case the uh, throat chakra You know, the call is the call, right? The call is the calling on your life, the purpose that we're here to serve. Um, the call is the call. I mean, you can answer it or just let it ring or go to voicemail and keep getting drugged, keep getting dragged around this bitch, you know, keep living a lame ass life. Or you can ask the call and lean into this, the discomfort and expand, right? And, and find out just what this realm has to offer. Lean into what the ancestors, universe, universe God, source, spirit, Allah, what they all are trying to bestow upon you. Heaven on earth, in earth. Lean into the discomfort. Breathe into, stretch into, flow into, whatever you do, stop fucking resisting <laughs> the call. Me to me. And so I said, Spirit has been telling me, nudging me to read to you guys for the longest um, from the book, The Spirit of Intimacy.
ancient African teachings in the ways of relationships by Sabon Fusome. And um, I read it for the first time on YouTube. Chapter 13, Homosexuality, The Gatekeepers. I read it for the first time on YouTube probably about seven years ago and got dragged for it. Um, so much bullshit about it being... the devil's work or white supremacy or whatever but you know as I continue going through my initiations life initiating me into this position of leadership um, starting with my own bloodline my maternal bloodline um, I found that to not only be untrue but just a space of, of, of ignorance you know the LGBT community is, um, and it's actually addressed in this chapter as, as to where a lot of the misunderstanding and willful, willful ignorance towards the LGBT community. And, um, I've been, I've been ignorant myself. I've said some things in the past that, um, definitely could have been articulated better, which I learned during this training. And that's leaning into the discomfort. That's the work. Knowing, hey, that I've hurt people. I've hurt myself. I've hurt others by the way that I've communicated. Not having the language. And so, yeah, this is my offering uh, to the community. <sighs> Benevolent ancestors of the darkness and the light, I ask that you be with me during this live so that I transmit the message from a pure space, a balanced space of heart, clear space of mind. Protect me as I channel these frequencies and these energies and mediate to the best of my abilities at this time. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you for welcoming me. Thank you for seeing that I am strong enough and I'm equipped and I'm ready before I have seen it and accepted it. And I say, I say. Chapter 13. Homosexuality, the gatekeepers. The words gay and lesbian do not exist in the village, but there is the word gatekeeper. Gatekeepers are people who live a life at the edge between two worlds, the world of the village and the world of spirit. Though they do not marry in this world, they say they have partners in other dimensions. What they do, they don't like to communicate to anyone. It is their right to keep it to themselves. Everybody in the village respects that because without gatekeepers, there is no access to other worlds. Most people in the West define themselves and others by sexual orientation. This way of looking at gatekeepers will kill the spirit of the gatekeeper. Gatekeepers in the village are able to do their job simply because of strong spiritual connection and also their ability to direct their sexual energy, not to other people, but to spirit. The gatekeepers stand on the threshold of the gender line. They are mediators between the two genders. They make sure that there is peace and balance between women and men, adult age females, adult age men, males, I say. 
If the two genders are in conflict and the whole village is caught in it, the gatekeepers are the ones to bring peace. Gatekeepers do not take sides. They simply act as the sword of truth and integrity. There are many gates that link a village to other worlds. The only people who have access to all these gates are the gatekeepers. I should mention here that there are two different kinds of gatekeepers. The first group has the ability to guard a limited number of gates to the other world, specifically those that correspond to the Dagora cosmology, water, earth, fire, mineral, and nature, because they vibrate the energies of those gates. Before I continue, I want to, I want to note here that at this point, Throughout the diaspora here in the Americas, we are hybrids at this point. And I also would like to mention that um, not all LGBT folks are gatekeepers, but all gatekeepers are LGBT. Did I say that right? Not all LGBT folks are gatekeepers, but all gatekeepers are LGBT. The second group of gatekeepers, which is our focus here, has the responsibility of overseeing all the gates. They are in contact not only with the elemental gates, but also with many others. <clears throat> They have one foot in all the other worlds and the other foot here. This is why the vibration of their body is totally different from others. They also have access to other dimensional entities such as the contemble, small beings who are very magical and knowledgeable. They are known as leprechauns in the Irish tradition. Now, what would happen if you're dealing with a culture that doesn't care about these gateways. What happens is that a gay person cannot do his job. <clears throat> Gatekeepers are left unable to accomplish their purpose. This is one of the most distinguishing factors about gays in the village. Now as to their sexual orientation, Nobody cares about this question. They care only about their performance as gatekeepers. I figure if they want people in the village to know about their sexuality, they will share it with them. I once heard that one of the reasons why gatekeepers are able to open gates to other dimensions is in the way they use their sexual energy. Their ability to focus their sexual energy in a particular way allows them to open and close different gates. The life of gay people in the West is in many ways a reaction to pressure from a society that rejects them. This is the line between empowerment and exploitation. <clears throat> this is partly because a culture that has forgotten so much about itself will displace certain groups of people, such as the gay community, from their true roles. In the village, they are not seen as the other. They are not forced to create a separate community in order to survive. People do not put a negative label on them. They are regarded no differently than any other child of the village. They are born gatekeepers with specific purposes and are encouraged to fulfill the role they're born to in the interest of the community. <clears throat> in the village, gatekeepers have an eye on both genders. They can help the genders to understand each other better than usual in their daily life. That's why a group of women, for example, might gather and bring a male gatekeeper to help them understand certain village issues. The same thing happens on the other side with a female gatekeeper coming into the middle of the men's circle. 
in the village, homosexuality is seen very differently than it is seen in the West. In part because all sexuality is spiritually based, taken from its spiritual context. It becomes a source of controversy and can be exploited. In the village, you would never see gatekeepers or anybody for that matter displaying their sexuality or commenting on the sexuality of others. Gatekeepers hold the keys to other dimensions. They maintain a certain alignment between the spirit world and the world of the village. Without them, the gates to the other world would be shut. On the other side of those gates lies the spirit world or other dimensions. Gatekeepers are in constant communication with beings who live there, who have the ability to teach us how to deal with ritual. And gatekeepers have the capacity to take other people to those places. I'm having a realization of my past partners. I'm realizing that I have, in my ignorance and in my lust, taking them to different realms and dimensions that they were never supposed to be entering or experiencing in this life. And then I have understandings of their reactions once those cords or those doors had to be shut. Not she. All right. A gatekeeper's knowledge is different from the knowledge of mentors and elders or olders. This is because elders do not necessarily have access to all the gateways. The gatekeepers, on the other hand, have access to all the dimensions. They can open any gate. Although their knowledge is very broad, elders or olders will call upon gatekeepers to help them open a particular gate or help them better understand what the spirit world is about. Gays and lesbians in the West are often very spiritual, but they have been taken away from their connection with spirit. My feeling is that without that outlet or that role in the culture, they have to find other ways of defining themselves. This could be one of the reasons why they would want to get married or make themselves look as though they do not have a unique purpose. Shrinking. Playing small. Menstrual acts. I have seen people in the West who have lost their identity try to usurp the role of gatekeeper once they learn about the power it involves. They do this for their own benefit without really knowing what it means to be a true gatekeeper. Being a false gatekeeper is not helpful to anyone. It can only be harmful to the usurper. These people need to understand that in the village, a person doesn't become a gatekeeper out of a desire for power or even because of sexual orientation. No. Gatekeeping is part of one's life purpose announced before birth and developed through rigorous initiatory training to ensure that its power is not misused. Abuse of power and authority. <laughs> A gatekeeper is responsible for a whole village, a whole tribe. Gatekeeping is not a game. Even though in the village, homosexual relationships are not commonly the subject of ritual. Here in the West, they have become so. Simply because of the circumstances of life. The ash rituals and almost any other rituals I have described may be used to strengthen gay relationships. 
what we have looked at regarding intimacy, sexuality, ritual, conflict, and loss applies also to homosexual relationships in the West. Because any kind of relationship, unless it's false or empty or superficial, comes with problems. And there is a need to carefully maintain and sometimes, sometimes repair it. Maybe the only difference for gays and lesbians would be to have other gatekeepers in addition to non-gay family members and friends involved in their rituals. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Lean in. Lean in. <laughs>